Today we're going to find the sum of an infinite series using a trick which is totally new to me. So the series in question is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 4n over 4n to the fourth power plus 1. So it's pretty clear that this converges given that we can use a comparison test with, let's see, the series 1 over n cubed, which itself converges by the p-series test. Okay, so that tool that I mentioned earlier that we're going to use and that that's new to me is the following proposition. And I should point out that this problem comes from the channel's favorite problem suggester. Okay, so anyway, let's look at this pro proposition. So if 2a is a natural number, in other words, a positive integer, then the sum is n goes from 1 to infinity of n over n to the fourth plus 4a to the fourth is equal to 1 over 4a times the sum is n goes from 1 to 2a of 1 over n minus a squared plus a squared. So check out what's going on here. Well, we've somehow collapsed this infinite sum into a finite sum, and that's kind of where all the magic happens here. Now, I think pretty clearly we can rewrite this in the form of something on the left-hand side, but we'll hold off until we're at the end here. Okay, so let's look at the proof of this proposition. So we're gonna start off with this denominator and do a little bit of maybe simplification. Well, that's not the right word, but some rewriting of this denominator. So I've got n to the fourth plus four a to the fourth. And now I'm gonna do a mathematician's favorite trick, which is adding zero. It's just what form will that zero be in? So we'll have n to the fourth plus 4a squared n squared plus 4a to the fourth minus 4a squared n squared. So that's what I did there. I added and I subtracted this 4a squared n squared. So that clearly doesn't do anything. Okay, but let's check it out. We can take these first three terms and recognize them as the square of a binomial. So what's that binomial? Well, it is n squared plus 2a squared. And then if we square that, we get exactly what I have like under braced in yellow. And then this other bit is also a perfect square. It is the perfect square, let's see, 2a times n all squared. Okay, nice. But what do we have here? Now we have a difference of squares. We have, let's see, this brown underlined stuff squared, and then also this green underlined stuff squared. So we can obviously factor that as brown plus green times brown minus green. So let's do that. So this is gonna be equal to n squared minus 2an plus 2a squared times n squared plus 2an plus 2a squared. So there it is with the difference and then the sum. I just rewrote it a little bit. But now we're gonna use partial fraction decomposition to rewrite this quotient using this observation over here. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll put now, we're going to look at n over n to the fourth plus 4a to the fourth, which now can be expressed as n over this product. So let's just copy that down right here. Okay, so we've got something like that. So like I said, we're gonna do a partial fraction decomposition. So that means we should be able to write this as some number over this first term and some number over that second term. Well, actually it's gonna be a linear polynomial in N. And we've done many calculations like this on the channel before. So what do we end up with? We end up with one over four A out front. And then our first term will be one over N squared minus two A N plus two A squared minus, our second term will be in the next term. So one over, n squared plus 2an plus 2a squared. So we've got something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more thing before we maybe bring this to the top and start our final couple of steps. 
So I'm gonna take this term, which is underlined or under braced in yellow, and rewrite it as follows. So this is gonna be n minus a quantity squared plus a squared. So I think that's pretty clear. Notice if we multiply this out, we get n squared minus 2an plus a squared. Adding on the other a squared, we get exactly this other term here. Then I'm gonna do something fairly similar over here. I'm gonna write this as n plus a squared plus a squared. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, let's maybe bring all the relevant data to the top and then we'll finish the proof of this proposition. So here we've got just a simple rewriting of what we had on the previous board. And now what we'll do is take this and split it into two sums. You might say, well, hold up, how do we know we can do that? Well, notice that each of these series converge absolutely. You could see that maybe by doing a limit comparison test with one over n squared. Okay, so let's do that. So I've got this one over four a, and then that's in front of the whole thing. And now I have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n minus a quantity squared plus a squared. And then let's see, minus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n plus a all squared plus a squared. But now is where the like really important observation comes in. And let's notice that these series share a lot of terms in common. So notice the, for example, the n equals two a plus one term here is equal to the n equals one term here. Furthermore, the n equals 2a plus 2 term here is equal to the n equals 2 term here. That's just based off of how this like minus a interacts with everything. So that gives us the motivation to take this first infinite series and break it into two pieces. So let's do that. So we've got one over four a in front of the whole thing again. And then the first piece will be the sum as n goes from one up to two times a of one over n minus a squared plus a squared. And then the second piece will start at n equals two a plus one and go to infinity. And then, well, it's gonna be the same argument. So one over n minus a squared plus a squared. And then from that whole thing, we're gonna subtract this second term, which I'm essentially just bringing down. Now what we'll do is do a change of index on this stuff that I'm underlining in magenta. And so let's see what that change of index is. So let's replace every n with, what will it be? n plus 2a. Okay, so let's see what effect that has. So when our old n is equal to 2a plus one, that means n plus 2a is equal to 2a plus one, which tells us that our new n is equal to one. And so that's what I'll do. I'll just change this from our old n, which was in white chalk, to our new n, which is in yellow chalk. So now that starts at n equals one. Furthermore, if we replace n with n plus 2a, we have n plus 2a minus a, which is n plus a. So I'll replace this n minus a in white with n plus a in yellow. So that's just the effect of that change of index. Oh, but check it out. Now this second sum is exactly equal to this third, third sum, just they have opposite signs, which means they will cancel out. So this sum will cancel with that sum. And now we're left only with this right here. Well, times the one over four a, but that's exactly the statement of this proposition. Okay, so we've got this proposition proved. Now let's go ahead and apply it to our goal sum. So we've just done a decent amount of work proving the following proposition, which collapses this infinite sum to a finite sum. Now we're ready to finish this off. So notice I have just a plain old n here and a plain old n to the fourth. So that means I need to rewrite my sum so that it looks like this. That means I can maybe factor a four out of the numerator and the denominator. 
So that's going to leave me with the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of n over n to the fourth plus 1 quarter. Notice that factoring the 4 out of the numerator and the denominator, well, they'll cancel, so that's good. Another thing is I need a 4 times something to the fourth power, you know, as my add-on term. But I just have a quarter here. Well, how can I do that? Well, luckily it's not too bad. This is going to be now, the sum is n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the fourth plus 4 times 1 half to the fourth power. So notice 1 half to the fourth power is 1 16th. 4 times a 16th is exactly a quarter. So that works out here. So now let's notice that this setup here is exactly our proposition with a equal to 1 half. But if a is equal to a half, then 2a is equal to 1. But that's the upper bound of our summation here. Okay, so now we're ready to finish this thing off. So this will be 1 over 4 times a. 4 times a is 2. So this is going to be 1 over 2. And then the sum n equals 1 to 2 times a. Well, that's just the sum from n equals 1 to 1 of, well, now it'll be this object right here where a is equal to 1 half. So let's see, 1 over n minus half quantity squared plus 1 half squared, which is 1 quarter. So something like that. But the sum as n goes from 1 to 1 is essentially just what we get when we plug in n equals 1. So let's do that and we'll have our final answer. So we have 1 half and then 1 over. Well, 1 minus half is exactly half. Square it, you get a quarter. So you get a quarter plus a quarter. But now a quarter plus a quarter is a half. Multiplying this 2 through will give us 1. So we have 1 over 1. In other words, we have the number 1. So there we did it. We found the closed form of our goal sum, which happened to be just one. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.